Yes, sir. It, it's okay. It, this this happens. This happens. So I'm just glad that you you were able to to join me tonight, sir. So I'm I'm appreciative. I really am. So I'm excited about it. <clears throat> so Uncle, be relaxed, like you told me. Uh, I hope to have some fun. So absolutely. All right, we are live at this time. Greetings, everyone. Greetings. We are here with YM Bay. I, I hope you all have had a blessed evening so far. Uh, I am here with the one and only Dr. Lamont Suffolk and Bishop, Pastor, uh, Apostle, I don't know, uh, <laughs> Lamont Turner. And uh, I, I, I want him to, to, to address this in just a few moments, but I want to give everyone an opportunity uh, to share with your communities at this time that YMA is live. We are on the air. Uh, take a moment, if you don't mind, to just let someone know, uh, inbox someone, tag someone, share this with your own social media community, uh, and just sp spread the word that we are live tonight and you do not uh, want to miss out on this session. I think it's going to be remarkable. No, no, no. I take the back. I know it's going to be remarkable. And I know it's one that you really don't want to miss. So I, I want you again uh, to definitely share this with your community. So I'm going to give you a few more, mo few, few more minutes, a few more moments to uh, get on and to join us. Um, it is an exciting session tonight. We are talking about systematic theology. Man, I'm telling you, um, one of the, the hearts, uh, uh, heart intents, I should say, or the intentions of the heart um, especially for YMA, is to cultivate um, ministers of the gospel who are thorough and solid, um, well-versed um, students of the word, those that know how to rightly divide the word. And through teachings uh, such as these, or such as like to be remarkable, uh, you'll receive insight and clarity on how to perfect your craft as a preacher of the gospel because at the end of the day whether we want to acknowledge it or not it is a craft and uh it is one that requires practice so uh you know the days of us getting up on the pulpit and saying we're just going to open up our mouth and the lord is going to fill it that, that's not the time in which we're living in and uh at the end of the day people will fact check you um and there are people that are in the pews who may not have the gift of preaching or the anointing to preach but they are students of the word and uh, they, they will definitely criticize and critique everything that you say. So um, this is why this session tonight is so, so important and vital for all of us. Now, I'm telling you now, I'm doing preliminary speaking now, but the moment Dr. Lamont Turner is unleashed, it's a wrap. I just want you to know that it's a wrap. I told him earlier, I said, sir, uh, I just, I want you to consume the majority of the hour. Um, I'm, I'm just a fly on the wall providing insight to everyone, um, but certainly we want to give you an opportunity and space to be a part of this conversation, and I hope that you will be blessed and that you will be encouraged and that something will be shared that really, really, really blesses your life in a tremendous way, in a tremendous way. Uh, I'm going to give you just a, a couple more minutes, just a couple more minutes, as I said. Uh, to join in, and we will be starting momentarily. Uh, just again, let everyone know that you can, um, that we are live tonight. We are live right now, and uh, you don't want to miss out on this session tonight. I'm going to encourage everyone that can to join me through Cash App to give uh, the gift that we have with us tonight the wonderful word that we will receive and the insight, the teaching that is going to be given tonight is just profound. And I cannot think of anyone better who can address this subject than the Dr. Lamont Turner. So I want you to do me a favor. I want you to join me, everyone that can, $25. I'm going to ask one of my staff members, I uh, one, one of my leadership team members um, who I see uh, online. I love you all. Thank you. Um, to just put in the comment and pin it, put in the comment section, dollar sign, uh, D-R-L-L, -L, Turner, the number one, all right? Dollar sign, D-R-L-L, -L, Turner, one, the number one, all right? I want everyone, if you can, to sow $25. I will do more 
Um, I just want us to be a blessing to the man of God tonight. All right. Thank you so, so much. Greetings, everyone. Welcome to YMA on Thursday night at 9 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Uh, I am Cameron Adams, and I'm just so elated. Uh, that's what the old church would say. I'm just yeah. so elated uh, that you would join us tonight. And we have a remarkable minister of the gospel, uh, theologian in his own right, just a scholar, a literal Bible scholar with us tonight in the person of the Dr. Lamont Turner. God bless you, Dr. Turner. What's going on, man? Oh, bless you. How are you? It's great to uh, be with you on, on tonight, and I'm excited to uh, be able to share uh, with this uh, subject, which is uh, near and dear to my heart. Uh, so uh, thank you for, for having me on uh, today to talk about that. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, I, you know, I, I, I went to school to, you know, just, just for this very reason. And I initially actually enrolled in, uh, in, in school for accounting. And uh, so I was going through all that. Uh, and I'm sitting in, in the class, uh, the second semester, first day of accounting class. I'm sitting there and I'm thinking, like, this is not right. You know, uh, and I can feel the Lord telling me, you know, this, uh, you go to Bible college. So I'm, I'm like, OK. Um, we had my parents had, had encouraged me to go go and get a degree in accounting and then go back later and, and get a degree in, uh, in theology uh, so i could have some stuff all back on that was a, yes sir <laughs> and so i'm sitting there first in my my first accounting class uh found that we were taking the second semester uh, it was a three-hour block first was lecture and, and the second half was a lab and I'm sitting there and I'm hearing the Lord tell me that, uh, you know, you got to go to Bible college. Uh, so about halfway through the lecture part, I literally closed my book. Uh, and I'm just sitting there because I, and, and I, you know, I'm, I was, I was taught in church and you just, you just don't walk out on the preacher. Right, so right. <laughs> I don't want to walk out on the professor. So I'm just sitting there and I, 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 I'm, I'm done. Like I'm, and wow. they, we, we broke for, to go to lab. I went straight to the, the admissions office and, and unenrolled in all of my classes. Oh my! Uh, <laughs> oh and then I went to and I had some I had some scholarships to go there, which was really interesting to me. Uh, <laughs> and then I went over to the Bible College where I had no scholarships at all, um, and enrolled there. And uh, yes, yeah, so I had to pay my way through through that. And, um, uh, and I, I but I don't regret anything. You know, I, I don't regret it. I, uh, I, I went to a Presbyterian school of all places. Of all to, places, yes, sir. I went to a Presbyterian school. Uh, and, I, and I almost got kicked out the first, uh, my first semester, in the end of the, that semester, we're writing, we're doing the uh, study of God. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, my professor, Dr. Buer, was talking about the Trinity. And I'm I'm listening to him talk about the Trinity, and I'm hearing him say different things. And I, and, and I'm you know I'm I'm born and raised apostolic, and, 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 and everything in me is saying no, nah, that's that's not right. This is yep. not right. And so I set out to write a, a my paper, my final, <laughs> on uh, the oneness of God, <laughs> refuting the Trinitarian doctrine. So I'm a freshman, you know, <laughs> I'm a freshman. Uh, and I'm going to repeat the professor. And so I did. And they called me to the dean's office. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh my God. I got, I got called to the dean's office because they, they were going to, they were going to um, kick me out of school because of my, of my beliefs. Um, and so we kind of went back and forth with this. Uh, and my professor told me, well, we're going to give you a chance. But you know that, that what you're believing, your, your belief is, 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 is a heretic. Uh, that's what he said. But he, did, he said this to me. He says, but your points are biblical. And that's the only way, that's the only reason why we're, we're going to allow you to stay. You know? So I got a, they kept me, in, I, I stayed in school. They gave me an A minus on the paper uh, because it was, uh, it wasn't Trinitarian. <laughs> Oh my so god. That was hilarious. But they so, could not deny you of that A. They could not deny me that. Yeah. This is phenomenal. What and now 
if I'm not mistaken, you've already given me, you've given us insight into one of the questions I did want to ask. Um, now, I'll be very honest, I, I prompted Dr. Turner with just letting him know that I wanted him to speak. I just wanted him whatever he had to unpack. I, I just want him to give it all to us for however long we have left until it's 10 o'clock. Um, but correct me if I'm wrong, you were a doctor in theology before you pastored. So you were already qualified before stepping into the role of pastor. That, that's, that's phenomenal. So you already, what did you envision going with getting, obtaining the degree before, because I'm, I would assume you were already in ministry, but before you became pastor, what dri drove you to go ahead and get your doctor? Sure. So I uh, was going for the bachelor's initially. Okay. I um, and I went to to speak at uh, Church Redeemed in Baltimore. This yes. is John, this is John Stokes. Yes, sir. And so as I'm 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 there, um, he pulls me on, I'm back in the office. I just finished ministry, and he says, "Young man, um, so what what are your plans?" So I'm I'm in, I'm in seminary right now, and he says, "Well, uh, so how far are you going to go?" Well, I'm, I'm nearly finished. This, this, this is a rough road, you know. And I, I, w I had no intentions on, on being a career student. And so he says, um, Well, I want to tell you this you, you want to consider getting your, your doctorate here. So I said, Okay, so why? Why? Right. <laughs> You know, because it, it wasn't why? it wasn't popular in uh, our our time in, in our, our our churches, and and you know it's really kind of sad. Uh, there's still some who don't understand the need for seminary. Uh, so I'll get I'll get comments like, "You need uh, neology instead of theology." And <laughs> <laughs> it happens all, all the time. It's still to this day, it's really sad, but that's, that's what happens. Wow. But he, he said this to me. He says, um, if, you, if you get your doctor, that doctor's gonna get you indoors that just being a, a pastor or a bishop or not. Uh, he said, that they're, gonna, uh, they're gonna think of you more as, a, as an, an authority and they'll, they'll allow you to you know, sit and you know, go into rooms and be invited to tables to speak because they're gonna, they're gonna know that you, you're an authority. Uh, and so I, I, I understood that and I decided to go ahead and do it. Um, I tell uh, Bishop Source all the time, I owe him. Uh, he, he was so uh, on point. Uh, this has allowed me to, to speak at Jewish synagogues. Jesus, uh, yeah, and, and I've, I've done uh, debates at, at, uh, at colleges before against Trinitarians, which is really interesting. Wow. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and uh, city council, uh, all kind of things, and so it's just been, it's been remarkable, uh, just the, the the path that I've been able to go. Yeah, I, I want us to get into the subject, but you you piqued my interest already, because uh, there may be some who are listening and watching right now who may be interested, or they've been vacillating back and forth with the thought: should I, should I not uh, go into uh, getting my doctorate, either a uh, doctorate of divinity, doctorate in theology, or what have you. Um, the sacrifice that comes with it, the constant reading and writing, and more reading and writing, how much of that, what, what would be your encouragement or advice to those who may be a little afraid of that process because you're not just going to get the degree it will take work. What would what you say concerning that, that part? Sure. I, I would say first, if, you, if you're going to go into ministry, as in, for instance, pastoring, you might as well go to seminary because you're, you're going to write papers every week anyway. That's true. Yeah, you're, you're going to write papers every week anyway, so you might as well go ahead and get, get the education that goes, on, that goes along with it. Um, Seminary allows you to be more accurate as into the, the, the letter of the text. We miss we miss a lot, a lot of content. Um, we our churches tend to be applicational preachers, and so uh, we're, we're misapplying the text because we don't understand the, the content or the backdrop to that text, and so then we're 
we misappropriate, we misappropriate grace. Uh, we misappropriate uh, sanctification. Come on, sir. Yeah, because we don't, we don't we don't really understand well the what the scriptures have to say with the letter, and it's difficult for us to to actually say that we know when we don't. Uh, first of all, we don't know the language. We don't understand the the, the writer uh, and why he wrote in that era. But there's a reason for it. Uh, so we don't understand that or, or the idioms. So now we're, we're going to get up and we're going to, you know, we're going to preach a word to a group of people and expect for that word to stick. So then what happens is um, there is a, uh, a percentage effect that does happen because the, the people are, are excited, but it doesn't last because now uh, it can't be substantiated o o over time. So by getting the, the full understanding of the text, you can actually, you're building people's lives uh, to be able to, to grow and develop like they're supposed to with, with God, God's intent. Uh, and, and I, I give it like this. Um, I, I tell my students, you can take a, a rock or a shoe and drive a nail into a wall, uh, but the most accurate way is to use a hammer. Because you'll, you'll, you'll bend the nail using the shoe or even messed up the, the heel of the shoe and you'll hurt your hand using the rock uh, or even bend the nail. But the accuracy comes with the appropriate tool. So by applying the appropriate tools, then we, we get the most out of the word uh, and then we can give uh, the best of that word to the, to the audience with whom we're speaking. With that being said, oh my goodness. Y'all, it may seem very simple, but when you really look at what Dr. Turner is speaking about, you then begin to take what he's saying and uh, parallel it with what we see done uh, with pre through preachers who approach a text and, as he said, misappropriate it because they're, they're using the heel of a shoe or a rock and uh, it's creating more damage. They're butchering the text at that point mm -hmm. instead of rightly dividing it. Uh, with that being said, let's go into it. Dr. Turner, explain, dive into what systematic theology is, how it works, and maybe even provide some examples for us as to how it's been done wrong. I, I just want you to walk us through this. <laughs> sure. this, this is about uh, to be good, y'all. <laughs> I promise you. So, so systematic theology is a it's a system of study as it relates to uh, God. Now, God is obviously vaster than what we've ever uh, tried to comprehend in our finite minds. So uh, the concept is to be able to take the scriptures and the studies of God and to put them in, in different branches that our linear minds will be able to understand. Um, systemizations of teachings, actually, uh, with which we can we can you know start to understand God and the, and then the things that as it pertains to to God in the scripture. There, most people will say that there's probably about uh, ten different branches. I I say twelve. Um, this is my point of view. I think that there's 12. Uh, there's obviously a, 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 the theology proper, which is the study of God. Uh, there is a, a bibliography, some would call it, which is the study of the Bible. Um, with that, then we study um, uh, anthropology. Uh, I add in, if you're going to study anthropology, you got to understand, you got to study uh, angelology and demonology, which is about two additional branches. Okay. Um, there goes the 12. Yeah, 12. 12. Mm -hmm. uh, then there's uh, Christology, the study of Christ. Uh, there's also a soteriology, which is the, the, the study of salvation. Uh, there's um, uh, pneumonology, which is the study of uh, the Holy Spirit. Um, there is ecclesiology, which is the study of the church, and then of course uh, eschatology, which is the, the study of, of end times or or um, last things. Uh, normally, what we do 
is you start off, if we're going to teach a class or we set a course work for a group of students, um, we break it out into three per semester. Okay. And, and we're looking at, for instance, what will group uh, theology and uh, bibliography together, obviously. We're going to start with God and then why the Bible is the word of God, what makes it the word of God, what gives the authority to be the word of God. How do we know this actually the word of God? Uh, we look at uh, things like uh, verbal plenary, we call it verbal plenary, which is the authenticity of each word being inspired by God. Mm. Uh, we look at, at inspiration and illumination. You know, the, uh, the writer has to uh, be inspired by God. Uh, illumination always comes with, uh, inspiration always comes with illumination. You can't have one without the other. The Ruach of God. Yes. So if God breathes out the Ruach, then there's a, there's fire in the breath, um, which goes back to Pentecost. You've got the wind and the fire that was there. Um, Psalms talked about the, 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 the wind and the fire. Uh, you got in, in Exodus, the Lord appeared. Uh, there was the, the wind and there was the fire. So you, you've got uh, all those, and, and what's the thing about God does, it allows us to see the patterns in scripture. Yes. So now, as they emerge, we can tie all these things together. Um, then, from the scenario, uh, that is the, the every word authored uh, by God, every word, every detail of every word, even to the dot or the diddle, whatever, it, it, each part of it is uh, inspired uh, by God, but God does not bypass the human agent. Uh, when we when we say that the Bible is the Word of God, we what we mean is the original scriptures. Yes. Okay. Uh, because there are errors in, in the trans uh, translations. Stay and there for a little <laughs> bit. Sir. We often, even as apostolics to this day, we will criticize people who look at the Living Bible or the uh, the new King James or the message or the amplified. Mm -hmm. And it, it's like, if it ain't King James, <laughs> then, then I don't want to, I don't want to hear it. I need, I, cause this is going to help somebody. So I want you to just unpack that just for a little bit. And I want you sure, to. Sure. Well, I, 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 I hope to do that and not make enemies. Like <laughs> <that>. uh, <laughs> so it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> Uh, when we look at transliteration, there's several things that have to be considered. Uh, you got to look at the the original text and how it was transliterated throughout uh, to come to the English version that we have. Uh, so we, we we call we have higher criticism. We talk about that. Uh, we look at the one the scribe that we got to consider what the scribes did to preserve the text. Um, because back then they didn't have, there was no Xerox, there were no fact checkers. Uh, so the way that was fact checked was that that scribe had to uh, either, first of all, when in a uh, scriptorium, scriptorium, you got several scribes that are in, in a room and, and the, the orator is reading the text. The scribe has to hear and write down the text as the orator is uh, speaking what's in the Torah. So they've got a, a lot of what they do depends on the hearing of that particular scribe. Uh, if, they're, if their hearing is off, then the text is off. Okay. Um, so then I could add then, Paul said, faith comes by. Ah, yes. hearing, yes, sir. I knew so, it was coming. Oh my so, god! Yeah, so they're, they're in they're in the scriptorium and and they're you know, they're writing down what they're hearing. Uh, the person say to keep because you got it's written on paper sleeves on animal scans, and over time you know, the, the ink begins to uh, to blur or fade. So you got to find ways to preserve it. Uh, the Hebrews are writing. You know, but we write normally from, from left to right. They're writing from right to left. Uh, the 22 characters in, in the uh, Hebrew alphabet, there are no spaces in the original Hebrew language. So when you read it, you're reading from right to left, and you have to know where to stop. Jesus. But another interesting thing. So if you don't understand Hebrew, then, you know, of course, we misinterpret a lot of things. 
<laughs> you have to know, you know, when to stop in the uh, in an actual line for that sentence because then there's not putting in periods, question marks, or exclamation points, semicolons, colons, or any of those things that, that we do in our English language. So you have to you have to know when there's a pause, when there's a breath in, in the text. Um, and then the other issue now is describe. They're, they're, they have to remain quiet because everybody needs to hear in order to record. So uh, if he is, uh, if he questions something, he writes it in the margin of the scroll. So we've got problems. Yeah. Um, if he if he if he's tired, um, sleepy, sick, whatever, he may write a note, or he wants to get the attention of his friend. And he's writing in, in the margin of the scroll. So if we go back and look at some of these works of antiquity, we actually find that therein lies some of the problems, because now we've got uh, texts that are are being uh, transcribed, and you've got a scribe who is who questions this particular line of the text and may add that in. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Which creates problems. So, so for my for my King James people, uh, yeah, you know, uh, I, I could show you in the King James Bible where there's inaccuracies in ages, from king from kings to chronicles, and and they're talking about the same thing. But if that scribe was sleepy or whatever, and he puts a an additional mark, which is just a sign of the pen. It actually changes the age of, of that particular king. And so you, you can give a king 20 years by putting the wrong mark. Oh my really, God. This is really interesting. So <laughs> King James is unfortunately it's right with inaccuracies. Um, okay, let, uh, let, let's do this. Let's do this. Yes, uh, sir. I'll, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm gonna prove it to you. Okay. Let's, yes, sir. To you. Uh, go to uh first John <laughs> I. You, you you got King James? Yes, sir. Wonderful, wonderful. Uh, First John 5, uh, and <laughs> we'll have some fun with this today. <laughs> and and there's, there's oodles of these, but this is one that's really interesting because it is uh, for apostolics. If you don't know this, uh, you're going you're gonna to struggle with the Trinitarian doctrine because you don't understand that this is actually, uh, you're using the scripture in your Bible, your King James Bible that's making it hard for you to explain the apostolic doctrine. And if you understood what was happening uh, and the, 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 the insertion that's in the text, uh, you know, you're, you're fighting a, a needless battle, I need right? Uh, all right, so start with verse number, verse six, why not? Yeah, verse six. I knew yeah, it, yeah. I knew it. <laughs> let's, let's, let's do that. And I, we'll do it old school way. I'll, I'll yes, say, sir. Uh, read. <laughs> <laughs> this is he that came by water and blood, even Jesus Christ. Uh huh. Go ahead. Not by water only, mm -hmm. but by water and blood. Mm -hmm. And it is the spirit that beareth witness because the spirit is truth. Uh huh. For there are three that bear record in heaven. Mm -hmm. The Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. And these three are one. Mm -hmm. what, what, and there are three that bear witness in earth, the mm -hmm. Spirit and the water and the blood, and these three agree in one. All right. Now, uh, <laughs> here's the problem with that text. Oh, Jesus. The text. Um, the, 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 the writers... Um, in their effort to uh, continue to propagate uh, the, the Church of England, uh, to continue to, to propagate the uh, Trinitarian doctrine uh, for the Church of England as well, knew that the, that that text did not was not a portion of the text was not actually in there. So I'm gonna uh, let me get there. All right. So you you have verse number seven: the three that have ever been in heaven, the Father, the Word. And the Holy Ghost, and these three are one. Okay, the ESV says, uh, "I'm going to read verse, verse number six, like he did." Yes, sir. Uh, this is He who came by water, Jesus Christ, not by water only, but by water and blood. the The Spirit is the one who testifies because the Spirit is true. For there are three that testify: 
the water, the spirit, the blood, and these three degrees. Because the original Greek text doesn't have the three that were recorded in heaven. Whoa. So there's no there's no in, there's no word for the father of the word that, that's not even in there at all. Wow. So now you've had this this text in your Bible that you're trying to defend. And you're defending it uselessly because it was never in there in, in the beginning. Oh yeah. And so, so uh, that's why we 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 need um, you know seminary. We, we need seminary trained uh, uh, pastors and individuals, so that now we can we can better proper the scriptures. I'll give you another one. So uh, <clears throat> Paul says Paul uses and John uses it quite quite a bit. Uh, <clears throat> he'll talk about you know uh, Paul the apostle Jesus of the Lord of, of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ. Yes. That that word uh, and in the Greek. Is uh, Kia or K? Yep, K. And it acts that word K, we use it as, well, they use it as our Bible, as and. But in the Greek, it means either. So if you're reading, you know, all the apostles of Christ, the apostles of God, even the Lord Jesus Christ, now you don't have, you don't have dualism. You see that, that Jesus is God. The monotheism is right there. Oh. Absolutely. So, but if we don't, you know, if we don't understand that, we're, we're fighting useless battles. With, uh, with because others. we're dealing with a translation that, like you said, from the Church of England was to preserve the Trinitarian belief. Mm -hmm. And that had spilled over into the translation that we so rightly defend that if it ain't King James Version, it ain't, it ain't right. Yeah. And, and, and King James wanted to make sure that they kept the people, you know, uh, 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 under control yes <laughs> and so unfortunately and and, and there's a, you got there's a, a number of the texts uh who do this when you get when you have organizations who try to take a text or take the scriptures and force a belief on the people then you're you're going to run into some trouble at, at times and so i use esv because it was spanned over um several different denominations so now your 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 religious bias is taken out. Uh, you've got these individuals who are trying to find the accuracy of the text. King James is a thought by thought translation. ESV is a word for word translation. So I'm going to go for the word for word translation as opposed to thought for thought. Wow. Yeah. So okay, well, Romans eight. There is therefore now no condemnation in in Did Christ Jesus. Those who walk after the flesh. And not, but, uh, yeah. No, that's what it says. Okay. Yes. The, the original text says, there is therefore now no condemnation of those who are Christ Jesus. That's it. That's it. No, who, who walks after the, none of that. No. That changes everything. Because exactly. ESB, the standard version, mm -hmm. is a word for word translation. Mm -hmm. And King James is a thought for thought translation. Because by going word for word, it it alleviates all of the biases that come, mm -hmm. and, and and it can appear to be rough at times and reading because you got to consider that. So some of our translators were looking for a smoother way to be able to uh, allow the text to read. Right. And so if you're looking for that poetic concept, uh, you you got to go for a thought for thought as opposed to word for word. Word for word. What, now, this kind of even spills over into the whole concept of um, the translation of Emmanuel with us mm -hmm. and how the accurate interpretation is not God with us, but with us, God. Um, how much of it, uh, how many, how much of the scriptures we read and we have formed an interpretation based on what we think. It, based on what we have read, when what we're reading, the translation of it is not precise. That, that you just messed us up. <laughs> you, this is absolutely insane. Oh my God. So, so Dr. Turner, continue just helping us to understand how systematic theology works 
And because you've already started giving us examples of how it can be done wrong um, with our approach to the text, but what what is the right way to approach and explain to us fully how it works? Because you're helping us tonight. You're helping us. So, so we, we look at it and it's, and it's, it's brand and what it allows us to do is to see how it, it's segmented. Yes. And it allows us to be a little more thorough in, in that particular area to uh, understand God, understand the scriptures, understand you know, uh, mankind, how man works uh, within the uh, salvific way of, of God. Um, the, all those things are important. So we, as we see the uh, each branch being separate, we also see how they're all interwoven uh, together as well. Um, so when I teach systematic theology, I, I always start with um, a theology proper, which is the study of God. Right. And uh, our very first lesson is we get into God's existence. Um, we, Stay there for a little yeah, bit. Sir. So we, we talk about when we define God, when we're, when we're, we give the, the different views of uh, pantheism and you know, um, any of those. We're, 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 we're looking at tritheism. Uh, we'll, we'll give all the different views that people have. Then we'll start to approach God. The first thing we discover is, is simplicity. Uh, and what, what that says is that uh, God, although as, he's as complex as he is, he operates in simplicity. simplicity. Because the, the only way for him to be revealed to a fool is to be simple. Jesus Christ. So uh, I find that man can, can understand God. So God is, uh, he is simplistic. simplistic. The, the second thing that we do is we look at uh, what we call pure actuality. Uh, Pure actuality gives us what we define as ca causation. Uh, God is the He's the first cause of, of all. So as uh, pure actuality, He's He is the pure act. Simplicity shows us that He He cannot be divided in, into parts. He is uh, unicity Himself because He's the simplicity. By being unicity, the only number that applies to God is, is the number one. Uh, because he is fully complete. He's not fractured. Uh, he is the number one. As a matter of fact, the Jews will teach you that when it comes to uh, uh, gematria, which is the study of, of the language and the numerical language, the numbers that go along with each character in uh, the Hebrew language, is that the, the only one that applies to God is, is the number one. Is it number one? Yeah. Uh, because he, he is unicity and one is that prime number that's that seen in every single other number. You know, so it, it's, it starts out of him that everything goes forth. As pure actuality, he's the pure act, uh, which, which is really amazing because what that says is everything uh, comes out of him. Uh, so Paul talks about in Colossians that creation was made by him, through him, and for him. Right. Uh, that 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 text in the Greek actually uh, is uh, in uh, him or in autos is the Greek word. Uh, so what it really means is that creation started within him, in him, and he brought creation out, out of his own self. So even when he spoke, "Let there be light," because of what John reveals, First John, I believe it is, chapter four. I, remember, I can't remember. When it says God is light, mm -hmm. he cannot, when he spoke, let there be light, he was actually saying, let there be me, because he is himself light. So, so when we get to pure actuality, then we now discover that uh, he, he, God, could not exist, exist, except he, God, exists, because his existence is based on his own self. Which is why he said, I am that I am to most. Absolutely. Ah! This is the type of this, th what you all are witnessing right here. This is, I, I, and I, can't, I can't speak for everyone. The reason why I am not just a fan, but I am one who values 
the mind of Dr. Lamont Turner is because he is truly one who has invested his time, his energy, his, 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 all of who he is into understanding the word of God and rightly dividing it, exploring it fully. And they, these are the type of conversations that really like, it triggers me in a, in a great way because I'm a thinker and I, I, I you, you, going to the surface, a lot of what our generation has become are surface preachers and teachers. I'm sorry, it's just the reality. Um, we give enough to have sound bites and there is no real substantive foundation connected to what's being said. It's so many cliches. So you have to excuse my, my expression when conversations like these are happening because this is the way my mind works. And, and, and Dr. Turner is far beyond me. Uh, so, but it's just amazing to be able to have a relationship with an incredible mind such as his. Being that God is pure actuality, I wanna have fun with something for the remain, remaining time that we have. Let's explain, can't, not let's, I would love for you to explain heaven because we, we have this idea of heaven being streets paved with gold, 12 gates to the city, and all of these wonderful things. But we do not understand, I don't think often we, we read the Bible fully because that just, that, that describes New Jerusalem, um, if, if, if I'm not mistaken. And so to understand heaven, my thought is that heaven is literally the abode of God. Even when Jesus says, I have to leave in John 14, um, in my father's house, there are many mansions. I was listening to Bishop Wagner and he explained that really what God was, what Jesus was saying in my father in me, because he always spoke from the place of sonship. Um, he taught profoundly the, the importance of sonship um, to illustrate for us what humility looked like. And it's almost as if he was, he spent his life uh, giving us a, a better example of what sonship looks like from what we saw with Lucifer, who was a son of God and one who carried, uh, in my opinion, and I'm just kind of going out there, he had the closest to the name of God. Uh, Michael and Gabriel's names speak of glory to God, who is like God and things of that nature. But Lucifer was named son of the morning, shining star, which we find in Revelation, Jesus says, I am the bright and the morning star. So it was, it's in my opinion that Lucifer probably has the closest name because even though we, we know the name that he was given on earth, it's Jesus, the Greek version of Yeshua in the Hebrew, we still have not been revealed the actual name of God. And it's my opinion that could it be that Lucifer, but it, it, either way, my point is Lucifer, that pride, the spirit of pride that exuded out of him, when Jesus comes, he gives us a better example of what humility looks like. So all of what Jesus said, he spoke from the place of sonship, but that doesn't mean he ever dismissed the fact that he was God in flesh. So when he says, in my father's house are many mansions, it's in my opinion that he's referring to heaven, but it can be misunderstood and misconstrued. So the concept of heaven, all of, all of that I said to just ask, can you give us some enlightenment without hurting us too bad <laughs> on the concept of heaven, Dr. Turner? So, sure, sure. So let, let me address it this way. The, the only way for us to understand uh, heaven is that we have to start understanding understanding God's existence. Um, that, that's the only way we're going to understand heaven. And then let me also uh, interject that we we do have revelation of God's name. Uh, his memorial name is uh, is Yod in the Greek the Hebrew. It's Yod Hey Vehe. We would translate it as uh, Yahweh, which is literally uh, the Lord. Uh, so we the appropriate name for for uh, the lord uh and we refer to jesus christ is literally lord jesus christ uh so wow. when when jesus is saying 
uh, go you therefore teach our nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father. Uh, the Father part of him is the memorial name, which is the uh, the Yohe or Lord, in the name of the Son, uh, which is the redemptive name of God, which is Jesus. And then in the Holy Spirit, he is the anointed one of Christ. So the legal name of God is Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, and so when we when we see that, we can we can tie Acts two thirty eight Acts two thirty eight and, and Matthew twenty eight nineteen together. And so he's not speaking. He didn't say my, in my name. In the name, the names of his name. And so now we see the name of God, and in, in that the Lord Jesus Christ, which is the full weight or the full authority of God. Uh, so the uh, Isaiah talks about his, his memorial name as in the Lord. Um, Exodus he reveals it to Moses as the uh, I am that I am, which is the uh, literally Yod. The Hebrew characters are Yod, He, Be, and He. So we know that Yod He Veke or Yad Ve would be his name. Um, uh, it's a weak way for us in English when we say Je Jehovah. Uh, and I get it, and I'm not, I don't argue with anybody with that. Uh, but literally, uh, the, the way it's translated, the Yod He, uh, Yod means that he, he exists. Uh, and then literally, his name reveals what he does, uh, which is extraordinary. Uh, <laughs> uh, he, he Yod means he exists. Uh, the they means uh, Yod He, Yod He exists. The, the He means He creates. Uh, the They means He regenerates. And then the He again means He creates. So literally, His name means He exists, He creates, He redeems, He creates. Yeah. That's in the, the, uh, the name or, or Yod He. So His name, He had already programmed in His name that He was going to create and redeem. Genesis 1 shows us every 521 characters in the Hebrew, the name uh, Yeshua appears in Genesis 1, chapter 1. So all through Genesis 1, but we can't see the name, English, obviously, but when you read in Hebrew, you're going to see the name Yeshua appear in creation. So he literally is, redemption is wired in creation. He knew we were going to fall, we were going to sin because he is uh, omniscient, all-knowing. He can't create without providing redemption. In the process, or he then uh, is uh, making stuff up as he goes. Jesus Christ! So he he creates with the full knowledge of man's sin, absolutely, uh, and then has redemption wired into that. So then, when uh, John gets in Revelation, the thirteenth chapter, and talks about that the lamb was slain, and and we we got to get that too because the Greek text suggests that the lamb was slain from the foundation of the world. Glory. Which, which would mean that literally, uh, well, Lord, Jesus died uh, for our sins when creation was, was established. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So that's why you find grace in the Old Testament because uh, he, the lamb was already slain uh, in, in eternity. So it, it now just appears in, in the time where we now can catch up with what God's already done. Which is then why Paul said we were chosen in him. From from the to the holy and already, before he already took care of it. Like, already took care of it. Uh, so we preach grace wrong. We preach it. That, that's how I was having to say before. Now, there's another part of it. So when you talk about heaven, you got to you got to deal with God's existence. He is omnipresent, omnipresent, all or every. So he's all and everywhere present. As we see that God's multidimensional. Therefore. If he is multidimensional and everywhere present, please find for me where God's right hand is. Because the only way for us to know right is we have to have a point of reference to, to determine where, where right, left, up, or down actually is. But if God is everywhere present, then everywhere is his right hand. So when we talk about you know, that, that Jesus said is the right hand of God, we're, because our, our near minds, we're looking for a point of reference. A point of reference. Yeah, and we're, we're not we're not seeing the multi-dimension of God. So literally, then Jesus, if, if God is omnipresent, then Jesus is sitting everywhere present. Yeah. Everywhere. So where, wherever. So then, then, then Ezekiel talks about then the, the his throne, and he has these wheels intersecting wheels. Yes, sir. Okay. Um, 
these wheels have eyes all through them, which is extraordinary. By the way, for those listening, uh, the Jesus is not the wheel in the middle of a wheel. Um, <laughs> Talk to because us. <laughs> because the, the text shows that the wheels were the cherubs. That they're not they're not God. He sat above the, the cherubs. So the the cherubs literally were turning wherever he wanted. If he, any direction he would be, the cherubs were. So the wheels had to intersect because he's omni. He's omnipresent. Yeah, literally everywhere present. So the wheels have to turn wherever, and our, for our mind to understand wherever he is turning, then the wheels turn there. But he's sitting everywhere, so we see everywhere. So he has to have wheels on his throne that are everywhere. Those wheels have eyes. He's full of eyes. He's described as having seven spirits as well, which is extraordinary. Yes. Uh, the Bible says he has eyes within and also without. So if we study God's anatomy, he. Uh, and look at him in the anatomy, he would freak us out. Absolutely. Uh, because it, he's, it would be nothing that we would uh, uh, like to look at because it's a sci fi concept, obviously. He has eyes within and without, uh, which allows him to see inwardly and outwardly, but sees everything at the same time. He's full of eyes, which is extraordinary by itself. So he sees everything that gets past him. But we have, he has eyes of eyes. And hair like wool, you know. Uh, which is <laughs> oh. Now, now, so then uh, on a natural sense, um, uh, heaven is right where you are. The problem is your mind has, has been veiled from the reality that God's right there. Jesus Christ. So, so then we preach and we teach this and it's appropriate. You know, you got to praise God until he comes in the room. Where is he going to come? He's already there. He's already there. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. And, and the reality is, you know, and, and I, I love the, the seven Hebrew words for, for, for worship and, and praise. And, and I, you know, the Tehillah, Tola, Shabbat, all, I, I love it all. But there is no human praise that we can give that would attract his presence. He's already there. He's already there. Now, another thing that we've done, you know, I, and I love us, I, I do, and I, I get it. We need, we need to be demonstrative to think that we're actually doing something. So we, 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 <laughs> just pray for me. We go no, through the room good. and we're, we're, we're waving, you know, uh, as if it's in the kill of the room for God. Right. So then how, how can uh, fallen creatures who need constant grace and constant uh, salvation clear the room for one who has never sinned? I'm done. And, <laughs> I'm done. Uh, and we're, 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 sadly, we, we become so arrogant that we think that uh, because in this last ballroom, uh, this group came in and you know, they, they were drinking, smoking, etc. So we can't get the place right for God to come in. But if he's on my present, wasn't he there when they were drinking and smoking? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. <sighs> So it's not the problem of God, the problem is us. It's us. And if we understood that we are, that we carry his presence, we're, we're warring trying to, uh, and I, I don't want to say conjure up his presence. Uh, we're, we're warring try, trying to, in, uh, I'll make it, uh, invoke. That sounds better for us. Invoke, our yes. Yes, sir, invoke. <laughs> to, to invoke his presence. When in reality, he was already there. What he was waiting for you to do is you did, uh, to take away that veil from your mind and know that uh, he's already present. Before I said hallelujah, he was already there. So uh, the kingdom of God is at hand. It's right in front of you. Wow. So then Paul talks about uh, us being caught up with him. Uh, literally, the text indicates that he has to, the, the, the catching up is he he feels you. So Apostle Varner said this, uh, he has to come in you before he can come for you. And we're, cha we're changed in the atomos or in the air, in the atomos, which means he literally is changing us, the, the Greek language in atomos or in the atoms. He changes us literally 
molecule by molecule. So that now we are, uh, this mortal puts on immortality. This corruption puts on incorruption. So he's changing this day, day by day. Uh, we have to learn to be filled more with him. But the problem is, we're leaky vessels. Okay. So we got to spend our, our time daily being filled with him. Uh, and he's where the makes available to anyone who would. So, so you made a, a point earlier, you know, about uh, some of our preachers are preaching uh, gimmicks and, and etc. Apostle Barnes told me this. He's, he he's loves seminary. He says when you really start to understand the scriptures, uh, ordinary preaching will bore you. Yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. He said because the Bible is so, it's so full of life and 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 so full of insight and revelation that the common preacher will never actually take the time to actually unpack it and preach it should be boring but we've made it boring because we won't take the word and use like we're supposed to um i have no more questions um uh i would love for you sir if you don't mind um I, 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 my mind is just, I just, books, sir, um, a list of books that you may would recommend for those um, who are desperately desirous of expanding their, uh, their understanding, their insight concerning what you share. What are some of, if, if you can, uh, I would say top three or top five books that you would recommend uh, for all of us to, to, to read and study that would help us to begin to think on a higher level? Sure, sure. I, I would first, I, I, I tell people this all the time, and I think I'm being uh, um, condescending when I say it, um, but the Bible, um, you know, you got to read it. You got to uh, read it. You know, uh, Adam Clark, Bethany, Henry, and, and Thayer's lexicon, none of those things are going to really help you if you actually read the Bible. And so I, I'd suggest this, uh, have a devotional time and a study time. Let your, let your devotional time be just that, devotion, and do not mix study and, and devotion together. So read just to read, just to read, just to read, just to read. And then study later. Um, and then you're, you're going to find out if you have a question while you're reading, just write it down. Don't don't go look for it. Just keep reading. And then when you when your study time comes, then go and then start to uh, look for the question that you had while you were, we were reading. What you're going to find is there's there's a thread that goes through scripture that if we don't take the time to read the scripture, we're not going to find the thread. God moves by patterns, so the patterns would emerge if we actually take time to read the scripture. So read just to read, just to read, and then study. Uh, the next thing I would, I would say is you can never go wrong with a manners and customs by, or book, pardon, manners, you need manners and customs because we're in Western civilization and we don't understand the uh, uh, Eastern ancient uh, customs. Right. So the those, that will help us tremendously. This is for the person who's just, just getting started. Um, and then I would say, uh, simplistically, simplistically, the get a, a strong concordance uh, compatible to the version that you're reading, because there's a, a strong for King James, there's a strong for ESV and NIV. So you want to make sure you have it compatible with the version that you're reading. Okay. Um, and then, of course, there's a whole method that's actually you know, researching the words and, and, and that part. What uh, concordance will actually do is, is allow us to see one how many times that word is used in, in the text, uh, it is, and allow us to see what that word actually means in that particular text. If we're doing a word study, uh, you can tie it together with a, a vines that will help. Uh, I always advocate for uh, commentaries as the very last thing. Okay, good. Uh, and, and and here's why. Uh, you're when you get a commentary, you're only learning what the commentator learned, and you're gonna and you're gonna spew out what they 
what they spew, then you're never going to go past what they discover. So uh, first, start to dig in and unpack what's there. Use the commentary as a as a checkpoint to make sure that you're not off somewhere in a, in a weird revelation that you never says. But get to know the text first before you try to apply it, before you try to make an application for a sermon. Just find out what's actually there. Why do they do what they did? When you get that, then multiple revelations are going to begin to emerge, and you'll have plenty of things uh, to, to preach and teach. Wow. Um, Amazing. There's a simple verse. Uh, Ezra studied, uh, Ezra set his heart to uh, study the scriptures, uh, to teach it and, and to practice it in nature. Oh, study, study it, practice it, and teach it. Yeah. One verse, one verse, he set his heart to study the scriptures, practice it, and teach its ordinances and laws or statutes in, in the Israel. That one verse will allow us to have an entire message. We can build it on uh, Ezra. First of all, he said his heart was at me. We can then talk about him studying, what, why, why he set out to study, what is it to study, what it means for us to study. We can then get into um, what it means to practice what you've actually studied, how the word of God becomes practical. And then now you get into uh, him teaching because now he's regurgitating and he's sharing with others what he's studying and also he's practiced. And that's an entire message right there. You, you built off, off of one verse uh, by taking the time just to uh, break the word, the, that word apart. You know, uh, it helps us to op open up the word more. And then when you go to Matthew Henry, Adam Clark, or whatever that you want you want to research, and now you're going to, you're going to see what they had to say about that. But keep in mind, you know, that their finite minds just like us, they're not, they're not it was an authority. Right. They're not an authority. As in, uh, they, God helped them to understand or interpret according to how they understood. But keep, keep in mind as well, you know, that each reader becomes an interpreter and they're going to write down based on what their religious belief or knowledge is. Uh, lean it to the wow Shh. commentary last absolutely first priority read 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 if you have questions as, as you're reading write them down keep reading go back study research and manage customs yes sir gotta get that because you want to know the historical content as to why to give get some point the uh, Jesus was reclining at table, and the woman came to wash his feet. The text says she came from behind him. Right. Now, if we translate that in our Western mind, we're, we're sitting down. So she's crawling underneath the table. Right. To wash his feet. Yes. So she, she can't come from behind because she's had to go crawl under his chair. Okay. So, <laughs> Manners and customs teach us then what they did we kind of at the table. They most of them ate on the at a, at a couch. The table was in the center. They reclined on their their left elbow and they ate with their hand, while their feet were were out and the table was in the center. When she comes from behind him, she can, he can wash his feet because she's coming from behind while his feet are reclining at the couch. So then he turns and he sees her because he was eating on his left elbow. He was on the left over reclining it and then eating with his hand, right hand, and she comes from behind him to wash his feet. Jesus. So we need manners and customs. It's called manage and customs. Manners. Manners and customs. Manners and customs. Okay. Uh, I'll give you another one. Uh, Isaiah says that the Lord, um, is it, uh, Isaiah 40, yeah, Isaiah 40, he meted out the heavens with the span. So we, as King James, me. And so right. we, we're like, okay, what does this mean? Well, a, 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 a span was a distance between your, your thumb and your pinky. Right. So Isaiah was saying that if we, if we know what a span is, then now we, we're, we're looking at Isaiah saying, well, he, he measured the whole heaven between the distance of his thumb and his pinky. Jesus Christ. So how huge is God's hand? As you Man, said earlier, he's everywhere. Yeah. 
So manners and customs help us to see why the language that, that Isaiah used about the span needed would be measured. So he's measuring the whole universe between his thumb and his pinky finger. So then where was he standing when he measured all of it? Where was he standing? <laughs> oh my God. Listen, you all, if you have been blessed in any way from tonight, I don't know about you, but I'm just, I'm so overwhelmed with um, just the information that we've received. Literally, you have to go back and watch the session. There's just no question about it. But for those of you that are joining and that are with us still, we're closing out. I would love for you to join me and be a blessing and let's give to, uh, let's sow into Dr. Lamont Turner. I'm going to ask uh, if my sister Elizabeth Clark can at this point, put it in the comment section, let's pin it. Uh, Dr. Lamont Turner's cash app is dollar sign D-R-L-L Turner one, the number one, all right? dollar sign dr uh l l turner one the number one um there's no amount of money that we can give for the quality of teaching and insight we receive tonight i mean this type of information hear me people would be required to pay bulk loads of money to receive it and uh, he is credible, um, but he is here tonight out of his pure benevolence and love for not just me personally, but for YMA, for the organization, what we stand for, what we're trying to do. So y'all, please, $25 is the least we can do. But for those of you that can join me with $100 or more, please, or even the best you can do, anything would be appreciated but less so tonight into the men of god again dollar sign d r l l turner the number one all right love each and every one of you dr turner last word sir and then we're going to call, go ahead and, and uh end the session anything else that you have uh blessed is he who comes in the name of the lord of the Lord. Shh. Go to school, y'all. Go, go <laughs> to school. All right. Don't stop at the surface. If you want to perfect your craft, if you want to be a student of the word, to really understand what God is saying, and not just to preach it, not just to teach it, but to live it. All right. Um, just to have a deeper foundation and understanding. Yeah. Go to school. In fact, Dr. Turner has a school. But anyway, you, 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 you can reach out and find out more information about that. But love you all. Have a wonderful night. We'll see you next time. God bless.